Hello, everybody. So um, um, I've got with me now um, Alison Leonard, who's a, um, uh, a PhD student of mine. I was going to say an old PhD student of mine, a uh, PhD student of mine for a few years ago, um, um, who uh, was one of my first um, students looking at looking at Viking Age research. So hello, Ali. Hi. <laughs> so um, good to see you. Can, can you just tell us a little bit about, about what your PhD project was all about? Sure. So for my PhD project, I worked with portable antiquity scheme data. So looking at metal detected artifacts from across England, but then homing in on some specific areas in order to try to map out areas of Viking Age activity that had been previously understudied or um, were completely unknown at the time. So PAS data has it's become quite kind of a big deal in recent years. Everyone's really kind of having a go at it. It's giving us answers to all sorts of interesting questions, but it's not that easy to use, is it? It's not that easy to use. It sounds great at the time. And of course, it's amazing because of the volume of data that there is available, but it takes a decent amount of work sort of refining, really working through everything, double checking, and then um, doing your own adjusting. So what I found was that I had to create my own database using that information and then to um, realign some of the dates to make sure that they matched up. Um, also just to simplify and streamline some of the information there. So applying sort of broader catch-alls in terms of artifact type, um, in terms of the dating and um, yeah, just in terms of a few other bits and pieces of information because there is so much on there but in order to work with the set as a whole, you have to make it kind of accessible to you and, and to others who would want to use it in the future. Yes, yeah, so I think it's a good example, isn't it? The kind of work where you, you come into a PhD with a, with a, a skill set and, and a, an amount of experience and knowledge that's kind of useful, but then you have to kind of find your way as you go and kind of develop your own method that works to your, your own kind of particular question. Absolutely, yeah. And it was a great journey. There were definitely times when I thought, oh my gosh, what have I gotten myself into? This is much more work than I ever envisioned. It's not just a matter of hitting the library and doing a bunch of research. It's much more involved, but that added to the satisfaction of it as well. And you really are developing your own methodology to suit your own project. And so what, what did you end up kind of finding out from this? Where, where did it take you in terms of interpretation and, and findings? Yeah, so I ended up finding out that um, there were areas that seem to evidence um, longer periods of Viking Age settlements, um, just based on the artifact signatures so and the different types of artifacts that we would find. And then other areas where you could really see sort of a blend in from the Viking period into the Viking Age. So where we see sort of, um, we can imagine that people were moving into these areas and sort of taking over these places or blending in with local populations during the Viking Age. So really taking advantage of places in the landscape that um, made sense. They'd been settled for several uh, decades, at least. Great. And so what kind of skills did you develop when, when you were doing this? You, you mentioned um, um, having to work with PAS data in itself, but what else did you, did you have to learn or pick up on the go as you, as you did the research? So I had to, well, I had to refine my time management skills, of course, that's all <laughs> that you're doing on the go. Um, but also things like reaching out to different people who work with the data. So um, developing kind of a schedule for going out to meet with uh, fine CEOs on officers, and then to meet with um, other people who, who were curating other types of information. For example, in Norfolk, we're working with the HERs. Um, and sort of setting a schedule for that and really working on my networking skills in that case. Great. Um, so I mean, what I would suggest anyone who's watching this, who's, who's thinking about doing a PhD or doing a PhD um, and wants to make it look nice, go and have a look at Ali's um, PhD thesis. Um, it's got the most beautiful maps you will ever see. Um, um, honestly, has. Um, so, so what did this uh, lead to once, you, once you'd finished the, the PhD? What did you go on to do next? After the PhD, I was successful in getting a postdoc at the University of Cambridge. So I was working there um, with numismatics and also 
doing a decent amount of teaching for the history department and for the archaeology department there. Um, that led into some more teaching for them and another postdoc at the University of York as well, where I was really able to sort of continue with my interest in metal detected artifacts and, and mapping those. Yeah, that, that's where we played the idea of, of looking at similar databases around the North Sea, wasn't it? See how, how easy it was to, to bring together databases from, from Scandinavia and the Low Countries and things. That's right. And you yeah. did the work on that. <laughs> and how easy was it? Well, you know, I wanted a bigger challenge after working with the PAS data. <laughs> so there was there was a lot more to do, but um, similar issues. So again, working with different chronologies, and this is an even bigger issue because um, people in different parts of Europe use sort of different chronologies for aligning their data based on the, the time periods that they're talking about. So trying to find some sort of more neutral ways of addressing dates and pinning dates to certain types of objects. And of course the language barrier was a big one. So I, I wouldn't say that I am fluent in my Danish by now, but you know, I had a decent amount of practice working with um, some specific terminology and then seeing how that translated into the English and trying to align um, things in that way. Yeah, it, I mean, it was difficult you know, pull, pulling together databases from areas that work within different sort of legislative frameworks and different kind of um, um, sort of cultural histories, different histories of scholarship, different terminologies, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it was possible and we, we did it. And I think um, um, we published that fairly recently. So you, you'll be able to, to kind of see that fairly soon. We'll put the link there or there when we, uh, <laughs> uh, when we get it, I guess. Um, um, and so what, what did you go on to do after that? Um, so after that, I ended up moving back to Canada and um, decided to retrain as a teacher. It made use of a number of my skill sets and it suited my lifestyle over here, but um, also gives me a bit of time to continue to, to think about archaeology and to, to work in that field as um, sort of a side project. But I teach French immersion and I also uh, teach history. Great. Um, and so what kind of archaeological side, side projects have you been doing then since, since you went back? Well, one thing that we did was um, co-publish that book on Viking Age artifacts from museums around the world which was fantastic. Um, but more recently I've been involved in television work so working with uh, a program called Secrets in the Ice and also Secrets in the Jungle, which are sort of, um, they present archeological mysteries from different areas around the world. And I sort of helped to look into them and explore, well, what did researchers actually discover? What could this actually mean? Um, does it remain a mystery or have we actually found the answers? Great stuff. And as your PhD and, and training over here kind of been useful in, in, in helping with that? Oh, it's been incredibly useful. Without the PhD, I would, um, I wouldn't really have a uh, firm footing when it comes to knowing how to approach some of the stories that I've been talking about. So just having that, the background in research and being able to appreciate the research that other people have done, but also to query it on my own has been incredibly helpful. Great stuff. Okay, uh, well, thanks a lot, Ali. We'll, we'll look out for you on, on TV, um, <laughs> uh, but th thanks very much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs>